Good evening from New York and Happy New Year. I'm Chris Hayes. As a winter storm bears down on much of the country this evening, we begin with some very good news from the coldest place on Earth. The first of the helicopters to take us home. Thanks, everyone. This incredible rescue today of 52 scientists, journalists, and tourists, all part of a month-long research trip to study changes in Antarctica's environment over the last 100 years, including what role global warming has played over that time period. Because of a blizzard, their ship had been stuck in what is basically a sea of ice since Christmas Eve. Now, for anyone with any sense, you think, fantastic, I'm so glad they were rescued. But for the American right wing, you instead think it's a great opportunity to point and laugh about the hoax called global warming. Because, you know, ice. The ship sent to the Antarctic to study climate change has been stranded in the ice for 10 days. Rescuers finally got through using a whopping great big helicopter that was landing on the supposedly very thin ice. They're all out, okay? So it looks to me like we're looking at global cooling. The prospect of air quotes global warming scientists defeated by too much ice was just too rich with mockable goodness for the right's leading intellectual lights. Donald Trump tweeted, this very expensive global warming bullshit has got to stop. Our planet is freezing, record low temps, and our global warming scientists are stuck in ice. The right wing had a field day, pointing and laughing at the global warming believers who, just to be clear, are only a group of scientists risking their lives for no monetary gain and little glory in order to help save the planet. It truly was a New Year's gift of faux irony for the denialists, and that it coincides perfectly with their annual tradition of snow trolling makes it all the better. There's snowfall on the ground in all 50 states. It's tough to make an argument when the evidence is all around us with a snowy white wonder in a crystal cathedral. Got wind chills below zero. You're not going to convince those people they're in the middle of global warming. It's the most severe winter storm in years, which would seem to contradict Al Gore's hysterical global warming theories. Get it? It's cold. Where's your Al Gore now? And I still feel bad for uh, Al Gore. 63% of the country is now covered in snow, and it's breaking Al Gore's heart. I wonder where Al Gore is this morning. That global warming is really taking its toll. Of course, no one ever said that climate change meant it wouldn't ever be cold. Even in the most overdramatic climate change nightmare conceived by liberal Hollywood, the end came not from hot, but from cold. A giant snow hurricane. A snurricane. And yet, here we are. Because this willful stupidity is backed by a lot of money. A new report found that conservative groups spend up to $1 billion a year to fight action on climate change. $1 billion to cultivate a group of people who delight in being on the wrong side of history. President Obama promised to begin to slow the rise of the oceans <laughs> and to heal the planet. My promise is to help you and your family. In 2006, 59% of Republicans believed that there is solid evidence the Earth is warming. Less than a decade later, that number has dropped to just 50%. There is an entire industry that exists to feed its viewers and readers with contempt and ridicule for not only the basic science of climate change, but even for the people who toil in obscurity, risking their lives to avert genuine misery and disaster for millions of people. And that industry controls one of our two parties. Joining me now is Michael Mann, professor of meteorology at Penn State University, also author of The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars, Dispatches from the front line. And Michael, you are someone who was targeted for destruction because you're a climate scientist by this industry that includes big money activists and also just this strange, bizarre underworld of climate trolls who are the kinds of people when Drudge links to an article, fill the article with 5,000 comments about what a hoax it was. What was it like to be in their crosshairs? 
Well, you know, it isn't what I signed up for when I decided to get a degree in uh, applied math and physics and go on to study climate science. I didn't realize that I would be at the center of uh, a widespread uh, attack, uh, an effort to undermine the credibility of not just me, but my scientific colleagues in a cynical effort to discredit concern for climate change. And so, unfortunately, it's part of the job description if you're a climate scientist today. And it wasn't just that, in your case, that they tried to discredit your research finding. I mean, they tried to personally destroy you. They tried to get you fired. They tried to end your career. Well, that's right. And, and if they hadn't done all that, I wouldn't have had a book to write about it, um, <laughs> which, you know, in, in which I describe these amazing um, experiences that I've had as, uh, as a completely, you know, uh, accidental and... Uh, unintended uh, public figure. Um, I've, I've become a public figure in this larger debate over climate change because of this iconic graph that my colleagues and I published a decade and a half ago. And uh, that has put me at the center of the larger debate about climate change, but it's also given me an opportunity, hopefully, to try to inform this increasingly poisonous uh, discourse that we have over this issue. Speaking, speaking of poisonous discourse, I'm going to stump you right here. Uh, how can there be snow when there's global warming? Well, you know, we climate scientists actually have a, a technical term uh, for this phenomenon. Uh, it's called winter. <laughs> and, you know, we're going to continue to have cold days in winter. That's weather. Uh, but if you take a step back and you look at the larger picture, which is what climate change is, it's the larger picture, you see that over the last decade we've had twice as much extreme heat as extreme cold here in the U.S. Uh, if you go back a year, we had just set the warmest, uh, the, the record for the warmest year ever here in the U.S. A month ago, we set the record for the warmest November the globe has ever seen. And as I speak to you today and uh, down under in Australia, they're experiencing uh, a record uh, heat wave. They have just announced that they had the warmest year that they've ever had. So it's that larger context. That's climate change and that's global warming. Can you explain to me finally what this Antarctica expedition is about and what is going on with the ice in Antarctica? I've seen the, the people that occupy this strange nether region of internet climate hoaxer trolls talk about the fact that there's actually more ice in Antarctica. What's going on down there? Yeah, so it's an another, uh, another amazing observation. It's cold in Antarctica. <laughs> it's cold down there. Um, and, you know, there are some interesting scientific questions about what happens to sea ice in the periphery of Antarctica. It's actually um, a subtle problem because you can actually build up more sea ice when the oceans warm up and there's more, more moisture in the air huh. over the ocean, over the overlying, uh, the overlying air. You can actually get uh, more ice. And the climate models actually predict more sea ice over Antarctica, but that's a small increase. And you contrast that with, you know, more than a 50% decline in Arctic sea ice, which is the real problem, because there's a very large trend uh, that's taking us in a direction where we will see the disappearance of uh, the Arctic sea ice environment in a matter of decades if we continue on this course. Although on the upside, we'll be able to drill for oil for there, so everything's sort of coming out swimmingly. Climate scientist Michael Mann, thank you very much.